Hey everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Beat. My name is Dave McKenzie. I'm the studio owner and, uh, and, uh, and chief teacher and engineer here at the studio. And this is a non-master class on, uh, on sticking technique. And what it intends to do is help beginners and intermediate players learn the basics of holding a drumstick and sort of get them started on um, just the process of, of learning how to play the drums and just get a real good feel for how the stick should feel in your hand. Uh, by no means am I a master at this. I'm not um, an advanced drummer, but I am a great instructor, I, I think. I'd like to think that. And, uh, and I can really talk in, in depth about you know, how to hold the sticks and what you're, what you're shooting for. So this is intended to really help you get started and to, to learn the basics of sticking. So I'm just opening up this stream right now to make sure that it's working. And I'll turn the, the volume down. And then I'll look at the chat here, just in case someone has a question, I'll keep my phone open there. All right, I'm all yours. All right, so over here is the airline guitar that we're giving away. This is a giveaway that's been running for a while and is coming to an end very soon on February the 11th. So if you participate in the chat, leave a comment, uh, watch our videos, leave a comment. If you just sort of participate on our YouTube channel, every time you do that, it gives you a chance to win that guitar. Uh, it's a great opportunity and uh, I would love to give it to you. Um, someone's gonna win it and uh, I hope it's you. <laughs> I, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful instrument and it's just a way that we wanted to sort of try to get our, you know, our, our followers to, to engage a little bit more and, uh, and grow the channel. So here I have a practice pad and, and some drumsticks. Uh, uh, these are just um, uh, 5B sticks in terms of the weight. So they're not super big, you know, they're not tree trunks or anything, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're big enough to get a good, good strike. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about just holding the stick and getting a feel. Um, I recommend this uh, technique of just sort of learning how to twirl your stick. Um, also learning how to just throw it and catch it and just getting really comfortable with the weight of your drumstick. You know, I, I can't really throw my left hand up here, but uh, you know, I really want you to, 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 uh, to feel really comfortable with the stick. A little bit of the stick should be uh, coming out the end um, when, you, when you hold it correctly. Um, if you're younger, you may choke up on it a little bit more, right? Just to get some control over it. But you really want sort of the optimal balance so that when you, when you strike the, the stick against the practice pad, we want, we want to harness the bounce. We really want to have the stick sort of firmly hit the pad in, in sort of a, a straight manner and bounce off the pad, and we want to catch that energy. Um, as, you, as you develop faster, sort of... As you develop faster, sort of technique, and singles and doubles, that, that energy coming off the pad is going to be essential for you to, to really be all that you can be. So, um, in terms of holding the stick in your hand, uh, I play traditional, or actually not traditional, this is traditional, um, but I play match grip, uh, which means that, the, that your hands are facing down and you're trying to optimize sort of the natural um, makeup of your body. Just your, your arms should be, uh, should be limber and, and your joints and, and gravity and everything that's sort of like working together with us on the drum set should be, uh, you know, naturally coming into play. You don't want to do anything sort of unnatural, like hold your sticks face, your hands facing up or too much on their side where tension might develop in, in the joints. We really want a nice flowing sort of whip, you know? And what's really essential and what I find for beginners is, is particularly hard is to keep your fingers on the stick. Uh, the tendency is to grip the sticks hard and go all arms, all right? That's the tendency and it's very natural. It's sort of, uh, 
a human thing. Uh, you know, it's uh, we want to go fast. We try to use our big muscles and we grip it and it, and it ends up slowing us down. So with the drumsticks, what you want to be doing is, uh, is you know, the focal point of, of the stick um, and the finger and the thumb, you know, there should be, it should be at a good balanced area to allow the stick to bounce off the pad several times. You know, you can use your index finger, but I, I, I feel that it's better to use your second finger. It's more natural and it allows the three fingers here to lie on the stick a little bit more easily. And eventually, as you get a little bit faster and you get a little bit more control, those fingers are going to be helping with your stroke a lot more than you know. Um, those fingers are, are just incredibly important. And your left hand, you really want to get that left hand grooving, okay? So, right? You really want a nice whiplash. And then, and, and you want to be able to do a double bounce for the doubles. So, you're just sort of, you're whipping it, hitting the pad, and catching it. Um, the next thing that I'd like to talk to you about is, the, is, is your double stroke roll, is, uh, is you want to be able to bounce it twice and catch it, right? You can hear my left hand's lagging a bit. So you wanna, you wanna be able to let the stick hit twice for every one hit, sort of a two for a deal where you, you get two for the price of one. Um, and you know, I, I would really recommend just really getting used to the stick bouncing on the pad. Those are triplets that I'm sort of starting to hone in on. Doubles. Singles. And I believe that the real goal in all of this is to get your doubles to sound as strong as singles. Singles are just so powerful and clear and they produce such an incredible tone when you're hitting a drum and you're hitting dead center of the drum and you're pulling out as much beautiful tone as you can without choking off the note. So, so I really want you to work on uh, your singles a lot as well and, and in a really loose and limber way. Um, the most important drill that I think beginners should become accustomed to is this one, where you do one measure of quarter notes, right? That's a group of four, right? Because we're, we're talking in four, four time. And then you're going to go to eighth notes. And then you're going to transition smoothly to triplets. And then transition smooth, smoothly to sixteens. And back, excuse me, to quarters. Eighths. And this can be practiced with your feet on your drum set where you're playing, um, you know, uh, kick, hi-hat, kick, hi-hat, kick, hat, kick, hat, kick, hat, kick, hat, kick, hat, hit. And, you know, sort of you get the triplets going and then sixteens. And you want to build up uh, a lot of good feel with your feet as well. But this video is just obviously hands because of the practice pad. So let's, uh, let's give this a go and um, we'll try that drill with a metronome going here. Okay, we're just going to cycle on this drill for about two or three minutes, okay? I'll mention that you will hear me flam sometimes, 
it's uh it's not intentional i did my last little uh drum pad tutorial and, and was horrified to discover that i was flamming quite heavily and i think what i had been doing is in order to keep hearing the click and understand where i was in time i've been letting the click sort of land marginally before my hit for probably as long as i've been practicing and and just because i had never taken proper video of that process i didn't know i was doing it so i suggested you do the same film yourself and get acquainted with whether or not you're flamming. Uh, so you record your practice pad and a video and you can look back and watch. And it's, and it's okay if the flams are there, they're there. But ba basically what you're trying to do with every hit is sort of bury the click so that you're, you're directly in time, okay? Eighths, triplets, Sixteens. I can feel the flams there. Okay, good. So again, the, the, the value of that drill, um, and obviously, you know, I wasn't playing it perfectly. This is not a master class. This is a not a master class with Dave, okay? So I'm not a master of the practice pad or, or drumming, but I do have some good information and, uh, and a lot of knowledge, and I've worked with a lot of drummers, and I think I can help you. So, um, the, the beauty of that exercise is it really, it really focuses in on some key components. Quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and sixteens. Um, and just smoothly being able to transition from those note groupings is very important as a drummer. You really want to be able to do that. So uh, if you're going to play something a little busier for a fill or something that's coming out of a, of a drum beat, then, uh, then you need that in your repertoire. And I, I really recommend work on it with your feet and with your hands and, uh, and work on it with a metronome. So, and, just, you know, and just enjoy the process. You can really, uh, it shouldn't be boring. You should be able to zone out and really just you know, work on technique and work on holding the sticks and, and let that be really nice alone time where you can be doing something physical and fun that, uh, that is really rewarding. Uh, so go out and get a practice pad. It's so key. And, you know, for that matter, you can work on actual drum beats with the practice pad. You can actually, you know, keep your eighth notes on your hi-hat with your right hand, so assume so. And then your, your snare will be with your left. And your kick will be happening here on the floor. So it's one and two and three and four and Okay, so you really can get some incredible groove going just working on drum beats and uh, reading off of, you know, some sheet music and working out songs that you really want to play. Um, sometimes it's really nice to work the concepts and the ideas out here on the pad before translating it to the kit. Uh, the kit becomes a little bit more challenging when you have to move around to the different drums and that's sort of the physical challenge of the drum set. But uh, if the concept has really been 
learned and understood just here on the practice pad, I really believe that that process becomes easier because then you can focus on the physical timing of just, you know, getting your hands from the snare drum to the toms or the crash cymbals or the ride cymbals or the hi-hats in time. All right. So, um, so work that out. Quarters, eighths, triplets, sixteenths, quarters, eighths, triplets, sixteenths. All right, and try not to flam. Okay, so the next section here that I'd like to dive into with you is, uh, is just doing multiple grouping. So, um, so we'll, we'll start off with the groups of four again. Uh, and, and again, we're going to work on singles just to sort of get your hands uh, really comfortable. So we're going to put the click on and we're going to do singles with the click, and eighths. Uh, actually, we can, do, uh, we can do eighths like this. Triplets, sixteens, fives, six, seven, ah, uh, uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, yeah, that, those are a little harder, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, Yeah, we'll see if I can do the sevens. Let's try it. All right, so we'll get it going. Okay, so I'm going to stay on them for a little bit longer. I'm going to try four measures because uh, some of the higher note groupings like the, the quintuplets and, uh, and the sixes and the sevens will be a little bit challenging for me. So I'm going to work it out slower and try to keep it in with the click. So we'll just start off. Uh, maybe we'll start off with sixteens. And just get comfortable. doubles back to singles okay and now I'm going to try the quintuplets Okay, that's cool, that's fun. So now we're gonna try sixes. You'll notice that I'm accenting each beat to try to keep uh, myself in check with where I am. And, you know, this is faster now that we're playing sixes. And you'll notice that, you know, your pinky may want to start to venture off the stick. And re you really ha have to be present and remind yourself to, to stay relaxed 
and to make sure that the stick is really light in your hand and, and that your fingers stay on it. And if you start to find that you've got a problem with your left hand, try to break whatever uh, note grouping that you're doing in half. So if, um, you know, if you're doing sixes, like a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. That means that we're doing three with my left hand, right? So uh, one, So, so much of this is sort of going back to your left hand and making, making sure that your left hand is comfortable at whatever tempo you're playing at, whatever you're trying to do, if you're finding that something's uneven, if you're right hand dominant, all right? So really work out that left hand and then come back to the, the groups of sixes. Another thing that's really important to remember to do, don't always lead with your right hand if you're right hand dominant. Try uh, groups of sixes leading with your left. And I feel like Bambi on ice there for me. It's like a little bit uncomfortable. So that teaches me that there's a lot there. If it's just a little bit shaky, um, there's a lot to work on and, and that's a really good thing to discover just that sort of that breaking point of where you're you know you're still able to do it but you're a little uncomfortable uh, to me that's what we're trying to find as as drummers and musicians whether you're practicing your scales or whatever you're trying to do so uh so i'm going to go back to uh one two three one two And I can hear that I'm flamming with the click there. Um, so I think it's just my left hand's way of saying, hey, I, I don't go first, you know, after you, after you. So oh, hey, Adam, how's it going? I uh, didn't, uh, didn't see you there, but it's nice to see you. Um, just hanging out here, uh, doing a non-master class on the practice pad. I don't know if you're still around, buddy. Um, so, um, so now that I've sort of done threes, I'm curious, can I fit in 16th notes with my left hand at this 70 beats per minute speed? Okay, so I'm going to try it. Yeah, and it's and it's tricky. So again, and this is where you start to really have to develop your sticking technique is when when you hone in on something that's just a little bit sluggish for your hand. So you just have to sort of get that mechanism of having your fingers sort of help the stick along and help, you know, ease the process of playing quicker. All right. So uh, and I can almost feel my arm start to groove and, 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 and get in there. Right. So I can feel my pinky sort of coming off the stick. And now uh, that I know that I can do the groups of four, at least sort of keep up with my left hand, it makes me want to try um, 30 second notes. So.
and I can feel a little bit of burn coming in my arms, which is a, is a good sign. It means that we're starting to work, you know, starting to get my body moving. And uh, now I might try that leading with my left hand. And I'll notice instantly that that's when it really reveals the issue of being right hand dominant. I'm so used to leading with my right. I'm just so used to it that, uh, that, it's, that, it, that once speed comes in and you have to go into that sort of autopilot, like different sort of gear, um, it really causes a problem with your, uh, your left hand. So I'm going to try again to get... Uh, And there lies the problem again, right? It's just left hand and just the shakiness. I just feel like I just don't feel settled. So, you know, uh, if I could adjust the metronome, I might right now, right? Just to sort of find the sweet spot. Where does the left hand feel settled? You know, can I, can I just uh, slowly work up to this and just get, you know, just that feeling of comfort with your hands, right? So... I can sort of see that part of the issue as I, you know, sort of observe my own body trying to do this. Um, sometimes, you know, the stick's coming down on a weird angle and you don't want to be spastic about how you're sticking. You want, you want to be maximizing efficiencies and, and just getting your hands super comfortable. So, uh, hey, Adam, I don't know if that's you that's back, but uh, it's nice to see you hanging out. Um, so... Um, I'm going to try to do groups of sevens now. So that's a little tricky. So one, it's quite easy to do the fives and then sixes. And then oh, I thought I got it and then the metronome had stopped. That was the issue. So um, if you're just joining me, this is a non-master class with Dave, you know, and uh, just sort of stick control. So um, I'm uh, in, in an effort to sort of help others you know, that are starting out and to get better myself, I've started to uh, take it upon myself to sort of bring this uh, to our YouTube channel. So we'll try those groups of sevens again, okay? Am I doing nines or sevens? One, two, three, one, two, three. So here's uh, singles, right? Doubles or eighth notes, triplets, sixteenths, fives, stay there a bit. And then we'll go to sixes. And then it'll go sevens. Okay, so that's a little tricky. So sevens for some reason feel to be strong, harder than eighths uh, or, or sort of groups of eight. So groups of sevens for me right now because I can do eight.
But the seventh. And it's because I have to lead with my left hand every second grouping. I really want to recommend to you these odd note groupings because it really does help you um, develop, you know, if you're left hand dominant or right hand dominant, it helps you develop those hands into uh, a nice little, uh, you know, situation. Hey, Nick, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to, this is a non master class, Nick and Adam. We're just trying to, you know, groove and sort of learn how to stick, you know, and, and, and find that sort of, I don't know, sweet spot of where you're like a little bit shaky, you know? Um, so, so much can be done with just your left hand, right? One and two and triplet. You'll find as you reach sort of like your, your break, breaking point where you can't do it, you stop breathing. And it's really important to try to, you know, sort of break this down into a super comfortable, like just harnessing the energy off the practice pad, keeping your other fingers on the stick. That's where the control is going to come from. And not playing full out where you're like ripping it and ripping it like as hard and loud as you can, but sort of you know, putting enough energy into the pad that you're getting the sticks to bounce off, but not so much so that you're, you know, you know, not breathing, lo locking up and just playing all arms. So, um, so we're going to try to do, uh, I'm going to try to do something I can't do now or that, uh, um, we're just going to let the stick bounce. Try to get some control over that bounce, okay? And what you want to be able to do is you, you really want to keep your fingers on the stick and, and, and have a real good focal point between the thumb and the finger at the optimal point on your stick so that I'm going to actually take the click off for a little bit because this is actually um, probably a pretty good thing to, to sort of focus on with you guys is uh, it's okay to, you know, take the click off and not have everything always be in time when we're working on technique, right? So, so we're trying to get a lot of good bounce out of the stick and just it should sort of take a long time to die. And then what you want to do is slowly start to increase the velocity that you're you're getting the bounce with so that it buzzes a little bit and it's just like it's this it's this beautiful sort of double stroke feel that you're getting with one hit um, and now what I'm going to try to do is sort of bring that up to a roll And you can let the sticks move around a bit, sort of feel it in your hand. Sort of find a sweet spot.
And again, my left hand is the one that sinks the shit every single time. We'll try groups of three. And I can feel what's happening with my left hand. I'm, I'm gripping it with the, with the thumb and the finger and then the other fingers are coming off. You know, they're, uh, they're getting scared. I don't know what they're doing, but. So it just shows that, the, that there's, an, uh, there's an inconsistency. And you may just have to go back to singles and just start to feel, you know, what's going on with that stroke? Where is the stick sort of losing its um, accuracy? So I'm going high, soft, soft, high, soft, soft, high, soft, soft. And you can sort of see this like sort of this wave start to develop with the, uh, the left hand. And, you know, like as you, as you start to drum and, you know, you're keeping time with your right hand on the hi-hat. So that's really kind of great drumming is when you start to hear the snare do more creative and artistic things, not just like just landing on the two and four, you know? It's sort of nice to hear some of the in-between stuff there. Um, uh, what should we look at here to, to sort of end this off? I always like to sort of end off with a, with a little bit of a, uh, a jam, you know? So I'm going to say, you know, you can sort of uh, get the metronome going and then sort of uh, and groove a little bit. It's really fun to play. And not think so much about rigid sort of, uh, I'm just jamming with the metronome and having fun with it. That's a great one for my left hand. It's so weird. It's so easy with my right. So I'm just doing sort of 16th notes and I'm accenting the one, right? So. And then I'm sort of flamming with my left hand on all of the, the quarter notes. Uh, That's very difficult to reverse, which I would say is an incredible sort of thing to discover. It's, it's really cool to discover these little things that we can almost do, you know? 
So everybody, I hope that was valuable for you. Um, it was for me. Uh, it's, it's fun to talk about this stuff. It's fun to work ideas out on the practice pad. It's fun to drum. And, uh, and, and it really does show up on the drum set. And this is a way that you can work without damaging your ears. This is a way that you can work on drumstick fundamentals and your technique and all of the things that really matter in playing the drum set beautifully. So guys, keep practicing. Um, uh, my name is Dave McKenzie. This is Beyond the Beat Studio. There's lots more, you know, tutorials and performance videos and sort of creative ventures that we do on the channel. And you're going to see a lot more as we grow. We're giving away this guitar. It's getting drawn on the 11th. So if you chime in and take part in the chat, it's really helpful and uh, it, it makes us feel good because it, you know, we feel like we're getting somewhere and, uh, and you know, we grow as a channel. So subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell notification button, leave a comment, you know, give yourself a chance to win the guitar and, uh, and keep drumming. All right. And keep, uh, keep cool guys, keep grooving and, and have a lot of fun with your music. All right. Let me know what you need, uh, you know, and let us, uh, let us know here on the channel what, what might be cool for us to, to do. There may be something that, you know, maybe someone's watching and you might have some insight, you know, and we're, we're open to that, you know, some good feedback is cool too. So peace out everybody. I'm going to just uh, stop the screen for the stream here.